lined up on the other side. Oh, can you give us a little hint though? I really can't. I'm going to leave that one You alone. can't give us any You know hint. already. You already know. But uh, unfortunately. But I'll get Barkley on the show. How about that? Charles Barkley. Can you? That's terrible. Who do you think is the Maria, that's terrible. <laughs> who do you think is the best celebrity poker player? Straight game. We're talking about just like pure knowledge of this game skill wise. Who do you think is the best celebrity poker player? I would say Ben Affleck or Toby McGuire. Okay. They both play high stakes poker. They're both really, really good. Um, so I'm going to give it to one of those two. But you know, you look at Kevin is really good too. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, there's a lot of really good players uh, that are celebrities. There's some good NBA players, mm -hmm. although uh, I'm not allowed to mention one guy's <laughs> name. Keep that on the DL. Uh, okay, I'm doing it for you. Uh, <laughs> but there's some really good NBA players, and so um, yeah, I think. But I, I have to give it to Ben Affleck. Yeah. Toby McGuire. Do you feel like you kind of have a role in as an ambassador for poker to kind of make it so that people? won't want to not talk about poker anymore so that these people that are athletes and celebrities don't feel like they have to kind of keep it a secret that they play poker because it's about taking poker out of that mindset of like you know this is something that we shouldn't talk about or this is something that might be seen by the mainstream as you know something that we don't want to be involved in but poker is a great game and there's great people in poker so do you feel like it's really kind of your responsibility to be like you know what there really are a lot of great people in poker and uh and I do feel like I have I do have some responsibility for bringing poker to the mainstream. I feel like I've done a good job yeah. with that. Um, but I do think that celebrities help us, and uh, and a lot of them. I mean, I've played with politicians that are so highly ranked in the government. I can't even tweet about it. I mean, I can't and even if, tweet about it. And if Phil like, can't tweet about it, then that's super top secret. It's crazy. Like I mean, they're like, oh, Phil, you can't tweet about this. So. But I mean, I think what's happened is the fans of poker, my fans, and the fans of poker, have moved into a position of power. Obama was poker. We know that. Uh, Obama was asking about me the other day, and that was another thing that made my head spin. Yeah. He knows who I am, number one. Number he two. He knows Phil exists. Exactly. He knows who I am. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, you know, guys like uh, Michael Jordan, Charles Barkley, these guys are pretty good poker players, too. Uh, so, and I was working with Tiger Woods a little bit at his charity event, and he's so smart, Tiger, mm -hmm. he gets it. Like, this yeah. guy is a genius. And so, I was explaining to him the value, why not to play two sixes, pair of sixes mm -hmm. in a position. He would have tripled up, but it was the right play. So you feel like if you coach Tiger Woods, he could be like a legit red in the He's shoulder. so smart. He, he was getting it like this. So... Um, Somebody to watch out for yeah. if he ever decides to, if he retires from poker and takes, I mean, retires from golf and takes uh, poker seriously. I, I look, Michael Phelps is, a, is just a great poker player. Yep. I played with him recently. He just like, it took him a, a couple of hours to get in rhythm because he hasn't played as much. Yep. And then once he got in rhythm, he just played really good. He was unlucky. His jacks lost to somebody else's tens and there were some other spots like that, but he just right. played really well. So, yeah, I think, I think it's important for you and me and the rest of us to bring poker to the mainstream. Yep. It's a great game, it's a beautiful game. There's a lot of skill, yep. and there's a lot of luck. Yeah. All right, one last question before you go. A lot of people have commented on watching your pokerography on Poker Central. They thought it was an amazing, amazing story. Really, really inspirational, super aspirational. Um, do you want to kind of talk about, you know, how you felt about making this pokerography and like sharing that part of your life with other people that people might not know? So the opening scene of my pokerography is the opening scene is an important scene in my book. So Poker Brat, the book is almost done, and, uh, and I, I've been lucky. I had a book called Play Poker Like the Pros, and I had a lifetime goal in 1987. I'm going to write a New York Times bestseller. Well. I'm going to win the World Series of Poker. I'm going to meet Mary and Amazing Woman. All these goals, like I knocked three of them out within a year. But one I had to wait for was a best-selling book, New York Times. I never had as good as a B in an English class Korea. Never <laughs> even a B. I was always C's and D's. Because what is English class about? It's about having the proper structure. Yes. Right? Yes. And I wasn't great at that. And so, and so when I wrote this book, I just knew that I was writing a book for the American public, for the worldwide public on how to play poker. I knew it was pure. It was it was the truth. And you should have seen all the red ink on the first copy. I mean, it took me 40 <laughs> hours to, because every word changes. And so play poker like the pros. Some guy held it up on ESPN. It's the New York Times bestseller list. Another lifetime goal achieved. And so, and so I think that 
Poker Brat has a chance to become a New York Times bestseller. I think I have a really good shot yeah. with it. And it's going to come out in the next year or two. I've kind of been waiting for poker to get legalized again. Mm -hmm. But it's just sitting there and I'm ready. And, uh, and I forgot what I was saying. But Are there going to be any freestyle, like, oh, written, so we were talking written raps? In poker, <laughs> but you were talking about, and I'm talking to, a couple, of, I'm talking to a couple of young rappers who are working on a song. That'll be fun. That's a, that's a side project for me. But as far as the pokerography thing goes, it opens with me basically drinking at two in the afternoon in Madison, Wisconsin. I smoke pot. I was never a big pot guy, and and people are playing ten dollars a game pool, and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing with your life? And, uh, and I go to the door, and I open the door, and I'll never forget this. Just, the sun is beating down on the snow, and the snow is melting, and the light's shooting in my eyes, and I'm like, you have to get the hell out of here. And I went back to my apartment, and I wrote down all my lifetime goals right there. And uh, it's amazing. I just said, all right, if you want to be a poker player, you have to be the best in the world. What are you doing playing $10, $20 a game? What a waste of what a waste of your life. Get your shit together. Yeah, get the shit together and let's go. And so, and so that's how the pokerography opens. And so I think it is inspirational for people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think that poker players inspire a lot. I, I've said it before. I inspire hundreds of millions of people. They laughed at me when I said it. But but you get tweets and emails and people telling you that every day. And so that's the thing that people don't realize. When you watch someone who's great at something do what they do, mm -hmm. when you watch Tiger Woods golf. You know, it's amazing to watch. Yeah. Rory McIlroy golf. When you watch Michael Jordan or Steph Curry, it's a joy to watch them. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty good at poker. Right. So I know that I inspire, you know, hundreds of millions of people. Now, when I say that, I'm not talking about that they're watching me all at once. But hundreds of millions, you walk around with me in any country in the world. And I'm tall, so then they kind of recognize me. And I'm dressed in black, so they kind of recognize me. And then you see that, you know, they're coming up to me for autographs in every country in the world. And so I'm thinking, wow, all those billions of dollars that we spent promoting poker mm -hmm. has helped me. And so I think I can inspire a lot of people, and I think that's important. All right, so... I apologize for any ego out No, there. no. Obviously, I'm struggling with like... my ego, folks. <laughs> Bring it. I know. I'm getting well, better. I want to do a, one last year. Let me year. roll my ass once. <laughs> oh. um, but... The premiere of a new programography with Jason Somerville is coming up on Monday on Poker Central exclusively, 9 p.m. Eastern. Any words for Jason, who, you know, kind of has brought poker community to Twitch, actually, and inspired, you know, what I was saying to people out in the Twitch world is, two years ago, Jason Somerville is not probably on the top list of people you would do a programography about. You know, it's you, it's Daniel, it's Jen Harmon. But what has, what do you feel like Jason's contribution has been that, you know, now people want to watch a pokerography about him on Monday? Jason was not in the top 50 people you do a pokerography about, but he earned it. He earned it. Like, he started, he started working, he works hard, man. I give him lots of credit. I really like Jason also. And uh, so he took himself from uh, kind of a non-factor to become a big factor. Yeah. He's earned it. He's out there, he's doing Twitch all the time. He's bringing people into our game. Um, he's working hard. He's a genius. He does everything really smart. And, and the way he, he talks about poker, it's true. It's the truth. He's a smart kid. And so, you know, more power to Jason. And keep crushing it, kid. And so, but that's the beautiful thing about America. Yeah. You can work yourself into a position where you become relevant or powerful or successful. Yeah. Cheers to that. Poker Central Live with Maria Ho, Phil Hellmuth. Listen, if you guys want tickets to our next concert, you can probably find it on StubHub. Peace. Well said, well said. <laughs> Later, guys.